I'm Richard and welcome to Zappy Productions and today I just got this mic. This is a WA251 mic and it's a tube mic that requires a transformer to power. But before that, let's look at the box opening and what is there inside the box itself. So in most of the reviews, I will try to do a box opening and showing you what's in the box content itself because I think as a premium mic or even as an entry mic, it's nice to know what is provided for you and what's inside there. And Warm Audio does provide almost everything that you need except the XLR cable to connect it to your amplifiers. Now, the only issue with this is that the initial power cable that comes with the that Warm Audio is not the standard Singapore 3 pin plug. It is a 2 pin plug. So, you know, it's not meant for Singapore, but I just use another power cable. Now, beyond that, the box comes with almost everything you need inside the transformer, the power cable to connect the transformer to the uh, mic itself. And the mic comes in a really nice wooden box. And if you open it up, you'll see that the mic is wrapped in plastic and you take it out. There's also a shock mount provided and that is really good. The shock mount is a really high quality metal shock mount. And uh, overall, the mic is really, really well built. Now, if I take the mic out of the box, you can feel the quality. You can even see the quality itself. I'll say as this is one of the nicest mic I ever hold on my hand. And it is definitely nicer than the TLM102. At least in terms of machining, it is really nice, clean and polished with a good heft. And in terms of heft, it's quite heavy of a mic. It is about 680 gram. And you know, with the shock mount, it weighs slightly more. I think probably 800 or 900 grams. I'm not too sure. But overall, I would say as the whole package for this Warm Audio 251 is really, really nice. Now, this Warm Audio 251 is definitely a tube mic. And therefore, you need to connect, as I said, the power cable into the transformer. And then you need to connect the ca mic cables from the transformer to the mic and additional XLR cable. So the need of uh, extra power and transformer unit may seem to be something that some people don't like, but I'm pretty much okay as long as it sounds good. This is definitely not worse than no headphone gears that I have through the many years. So the whole purpose of this review is to give you a more technical look at this mic and also to compare with a mic of a more similar price range. Because I see a lot of reviews online and they were comparing with something five times the price. Of course, the five times the price is slightly better or what, uh, but there is five times the price. So let's look at something of similar price itself. Let's talk about the mic itself a little bit before you know we enter on to the review itself. Now, as I said, the mic is really well built, really nice and no, after mounting on it, it is quite front heavy, so you need to make sure that you, you know weigh down your various stands properly to ensure the mic doesn't topple or anything. The mic itself has three polar patterns that you can choose from: the cardioid, the omnidirection, and the figure eight. For this review, I'll only be using the cardioid pattern so that I can compare the TLM102. Now, the reason why I'm comparing the TLM102 is because this is the only high-end mic I have on hand, and they are the same price. With the shock mount, this is 799 and with the full set, this is 799 Even though this is meant to emulate a much higher and more expensive mic, which is the, you know, uh, 251 original mics. And those mics are really, really expensive, easily 10 times the price of this. And in terms of frequency graph, it depends on which pattern it is. The graph is relatively flat. It goes up and down, but, you know, it's relatively flat. And you notice there is no significant presence boost, at least in the cardioid mode. So that is something to note. So... It's, it's probably a neutral sounding mic or supposed to be a neutral sounding mic. So now let's move to the test itself. Both mics are plugged into my mix pre tree and they are using everything the same. The gain level is 39 for this and 40 for this. And when I'm starting the test, I remove the pop filter so that we can have a better understanding of the mics, especially in comparison with each other so that you can have a good understanding of what a $800 mic sounds like on my voice. Okay, it's on my voice, just a note. <laughs> So the test I'm doing is listed here. You can take a look at the test. If you have any questions, leave down in the comments below. But on general, the test is testing a lot of the technical aspects on the mic rather than its uh, sonic aspects. The sonic aspect, I will have to wait, you know, when my singers can come in and then they will test the mic for me. But, you know, you can base on my voice and listen to the difference itself. So my voice will have a lot of variation. I think my voice is a little squeaky and you probably can hear and see the difference or should I say hear the difference in this video itself this will be the first test this will be the plosive test Peter Piper pick a pack of pickle pebbles Peter Piper pick a pack of pickle pebbles the next test will be the proximity and distance test this is the proximity effect of the mic this is at 3 inches. This is at 1 feet. This is at 2 feet. This is the proximity effect of the TLM102. This is at 3 inches. This is at 1 feet. This is at 2 feet. Next, we have the room ambience and noise test. Next, we will have the tapping on the table test. Next, we will have the tapping on the keyboard test.
Next, we will have the tapping on the table test. Next, we will have the tapping on the keyboard test. This is the polar pattern test. This is the test from the front. This is the test from the side. This is the test from the back. This is the polar pattern test. This is the test from the front. This is the test from the side. This is the test from the back. This is the soft and loud vocal test. This is a very, very soft voice. This is my usual speaking voice. This is a really, really loud voice. This is the soft and loud vocal test. This is my usual speaking voice. This is a really, really loud voice. So now we have tested both mic and let me take a listen and I'll get back to you on the test results. I'm back and this is about four to five hours later and I have listened to the recordings, listened to my voice for the last five hours and I have some conclusion, especially from the test and also how I feel about both mics. Firstly, from the test itself, both mics suffer from plosives. The TLM seems to be a little bit more sensitive to it. So just a note, both of them require a pop filter to utilize properly and of course, use better mouth techniques. The next thing we talk about is the proximity effect and the WA251 does exhibit more proximity effect. Both of them do have them, but the WA251 is a little bit more obvious. So when it comes to the room and ambient and self-noise test, both mics have no self-noise because if you amplify the volume for both of those low volume noise itself, they seem to be my room noise. In fact, during the test itself, I boosted it by 15 decibels. If you listen closely, there is no self-noise, it is just room noise. When it comes to the room noise itself, WA251 does receive more of them and it is noticeable about a degree of 4 decibels. The next thing we'll talk about is actually the polar pattern and definitely the WA251 do pick up more sound from the side and more slightly more sound from the back to a degree about 5 decibels to 6 decibels more and that is quite expected because if you see the cardioid pattern of the 251, it is receiving sound from the side. And then we went on to the soft and loud test. When it comes to the loud part, both of them are the same after I remove 5 dB from it, if not it'd be unbearable to listen. Uh, both mics is about the same. They pick out at 0 dBFS. But when it comes to the soft volume, the WA251 seems to pick up a little bit more of the soft whispers to about 3 to 4 dB more than the TLM102. Now, I'm pretty sure that both mics are about the same level. If you listen throughout the entire video, they are about the same level. If I cut through, you really cannot notice the difference. At most, it's about 1 dB. So at least they comes to whispers themselves or comes to all those soft with the noise. The WA251 seems to be picking them up just a little bit more than the TLM102. So it comes to the last part, which is about my voice itself. So when it comes to my voice, I find that the 251 increases my voice presence. It seems that there's some sort of mid boost for the 251 or maybe it's because it's flat and there's no presence boost as such. My voice which mainly lies in the mid become more obvious. There's also slight warmness in my voice in the 251 and maybe that's the tube itself and uh, the 251 seems to be picking up a little bit more of all my bad mouth movements, the clicks, the breaths and uh, anything that is not so nice to hear. WA251 seems to be more sensitive to that and maybe it's because the way I do it, the frequencies are within the little peaks in the WA251 charts while the TLM is supposedly to be really flat throughout. And if you ask me if you really listen side by side and you know you toggle between them, the TLM just felt a little bit more laid back. But when it comes to clarity, details seems to be the same. Maybe the 251 has a little bit more because it seems to be more audible but seems to be about the same. If I listen critically, I can hear both of them in both mics. And if you ask me in terms of absolute no crispness, I would say as the 251 seems to be a slightly more crisp than the TLM102. And if I was not to EQ my voice, I will be more happy with the 251 than the TLM102. And as such, if you ask me today if I have 800 USD to spend, obviously I really spend on them, uh, I will definitely buy the WA251 over the TLM102, at least for the purpose of my voice. But that being said, this is not the proper test. There is no instrumental test. There is no female vocal test. There's only my voice, which probably can kill most of you guys' ears, uh, probably cause them to bleed when you hear it too much. So really, I think this test is incomplete, but it gives you a little bit 
understanding on a technical viewpoint and at least for my voice, how does it sound like? And you should know that the 251 is really based on a mic that is so much more expensive and by default, if you don't talk about a shop mount and anything and considering that Neoman is selling their name, supposedly 102 is a slightly lower mic, I guess. And the WA251 is usually compared with mics of $5,000, $10,000. So, at least from today's comparison, I feel that the WA251 is definitely better for my voice, but not incredibly superior over the TLM102. And if I have either of them, i am probably be happy. And if I was to have a blind test with separated recording and a gap of about 10 seconds in between, I probably can't tell the difference. And that's about it for today's review. Do like and subscribe if you want to see more of such review. If not, you know, just continue following and just see the videos that I create. And till the next time, I will see you again. Bye bye. And let me test some deep voice. Am I nice and deep? Maybe not. I think I sound like a duck. Bye-bye.